Get your body into position. Sit straight, hands on your lap. Close your eyes. And get your mind in position. Think about the breath and be aware of the sensation of the breathing. See, it's not all that hard. Just doing it is not the hard part. The hard part is the maintaining, keeping it there. Because the mind isn't used to staying in one position, just like the body isn't very used to staying in one position. But the mind tends to move a lot faster and to be a lot more fickle than the body. Which is why we have to train it. And while we have to work on that really hard aspect of it, we're just keeping it in one place, maintaining it. And John Lee once said there are three steps. It's the doing, the maintaining, and then the using of the concentration. The using is fun. Once the mind gets settled down, you start using it as a basis for understanding things. You suddenly see the motions of the mind as it creates thoughts. And it's a fascinating process. It's a fascinating process to take apart. The maintaining, though, isn't all that fascinating. You learn a lot of good lessons about the mind in the course of maintaining it. Without those lessons, you couldn't do the more refined work of putting the mind to use to gain insight. But still, it's the most difficult part of the practice. And John Lee once made another comparison. He said it's like putting a bridge across the river. The pilings on this bank and that bank are not hard to place, but it's the pilings in the middle that are hard to place. Because you've got the current of the river that you've got to withstand. You dig down and put a few stones on the, the bottom of the river, and you come back with your next load of stones, you discover the first load of stones has washed away. Which is why you need techniques for getting that middle set of pilings in the, into the river, because otherwise the bridge just can't go across the river at all. So this is what we work at. In the beginning, the work is simply the question of noticing when the mind is slipped back, slipped off, and bring it back. Slips off again, bring it back again. You try to get sensitive to when you can tell that the mind is about to slip off. It hasn't gone yet, but it's getting ready to go. It's tensed up, it's tensed up and ready to jump. When you can sense that, then you can keep the mind more and more consistently with the breath, because as soon as you feel that tensing up, you just relax it. You don't have to ask about where the mind was going to jump, because there is a temptation. Sometimes the mind gets ready to jump off to something, and you wonder, well, where is it going to go next? And part of you wants to see where it's going next, or when a thought forms, and it's just that vague sensation of a thought, and the mind puts a label on it, and you want to see, it. does this label really fit? But if you look more carefully at the process, you begin to realize that whether the label fits or not, you're going to, the mind has a tendency to make it fit. So it's not a question of whether it's a true label or not, it's whether you want to follow through with that process of making it fit into the label. And you don't have to do that. You know, it's a little stirring in the mind and the label coming up, and you don't have to ask whether the label is true or not, just let it go. So the stirring itself can disband. And then when the mind finally does settle down, in the beginning there's a it can be a sense of rapture, a sense of real accomplishment that you finally got the mind to stay with the breath for long periods of time. For longer and longer periods of time. And it feels really refreshing to be there. And then you make it a game, seeing how quickly you can get there, how often you can get there, what activities you can be doing at the same time you might get the mind to settle down.
and I don't want to spoil it for you, but there comes a time when this gets boring too. But it's boring only because you forget, because you lose perspective. Everything seems calm, everything seems settled, and there's a part of the mind that gets bored. And oftentimes that's your first object of insight, is to look into the boredom. Why is the mind bored with a particular state of calm and ease? Because after all, the mind is in its most secure place, most comfortable place. So why would part of you want to stir things up? Look into that. There's a chance for insight right there. Or you start telling yourself, this is really stupid just sitting here still, 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 calm, calm, calm. This is not intelligent at all. This is when you have to remind yourself you're working on a foundation. And the stronger the foundation, then when the time comes to build a building, the taller it can go. The more stable it'll be. Because when insights come, you want them to be solid insights. You don't want them to be the sort of thing that knocks you askew. In other words, you gain an insight and you get so excited about it that you lose perspective, forget to take, and look, take it and look on the other side. When an insight comes, as John Lee always recommends, we'll turn it around, turn it inside out. Saying, well, this must be this. Well, he says, well, try thinking about what, what if it were not this? What if it were the opposite? Would there be a lesson there as well? In other words, just as you're not supposed to fall for the content of your thoughts, you're not supposed to fall for the content of your insights. And that requires really stable concentration, because when the insights come, many times they're very striking, very interesting. There's a strong sense of accomplishment that comes with them, so that you don't get carried away by that sense of accomplishment. You want to have your concentration really solid so that it's ready to look on the other side of the insight. This is one reason why you need good, solid concentration and have to work at the steady, steady work of just keep coming back, coming back, staying, staying, keeping it still, keeping it still. And then that old question of perception comes up again. Your perception of your state of mind starts getting questionable. Or file that away for future reference. Because as the Buddha said, all the states of concentration, all the states of jhana, up through the state of nothingness, these are all perception attainments. It's the perception you apply to them that keeps the state going. And as you stay with it, there comes to be a, a slight sense of the artificiality of that perception. But wait until this concentration is really solid before you start questioning it. Because again, the perception is what keeps the state of concentration going. And it is an artificial state that you're creating in the mind. And when the time for insight comes, that'll be one of the topics you really want to focus on, is the artificiality of that concept, the artificiality of the perception that creates that state of concentration you've been living with. But for the time being, just file it away for future reference. If you question things too quickly, too early, everything just falls apart in the mind and you're back to where you started. So that even though it may seem like drudgery work, just coming back, coming back, coming back, everything depends on this. This quality of consistency, this quality of maintenance. Get really good at it, get really familiar with it. The more familiar you are with it, then the more you can easily you can use it as the topic of insight when the time comes. 
there's a passage where the Buddha talks about the meditator whose mind has attained a really solid state of equanimity. You realize at that point that you can apply it to different things. You can apply it to the sense of infinite space. You can apply it to the sense of infinite consciousness, nothingness. You can need a perception or non-perception. Once you recognize precisely where those perceptions are, precisely how you can focus on them and stay there, the insight is going to come when you realize how constructed they are. In the beginning, it's very obvious that they're constructed because you're working so hard to put them together. But as you get more and more familiar with them, there's a greater sense that you're simply tuning in to something that's already there. And you're more impressed by the already there-ness of the state. And you begin to lose sight of the, the act of tuning in because it gets easier and easier, more and more natural. But it's still there. And it's still that element of construction, that element of fabrication that keeps you there. And when the concentration gets solid enough so you can really look at it, even if it's even if in its most refined state, that's when the insight really hits you. How constructed this is. How artificial the whole thing is. Something you've learned to depend on. If you start analyzing things in terms of the three characteristics before you've really depended on them, before you've really gotten familiar with them, it short circuits the whole process. Oh yes, concentration is un unstable. Well, anyone can sit and meditate for two minutes and learn that. That doesn't mean very much. But if you've developed the skill so that you're really solidly with it, test that principle of inconstancy. How constant can you make this state of the mind? You finally get to the point where you realize that you've made it as constant as anybody could ever make it, as you could ever make it at all. And it still falls under the three characteristics. It's still constructed. That's when the mind starts tending toward the unconstructed, the unfabricated. And if you brought the mind to still enough a state of equilibrium, you can stop fabricating. And it's not just an intentional saying, well, I'm going to put a stop to this, but it's learning how to do that without any new intention at all taking the place of what you've been doing. That's where the real skill lies. That's why we spend so much time getting the mind into balance, balance, balance. Because it's only in a state of balance like that that you really can totally let go. Some people have the conception that meditation is a process of getting the mind into a really extreme state where just things, where things break through. Bring it to the total edge of instability, then suddenly you break through to something deeper. Well, I have yet to find the Buddha describe it that way. For him, it's more bringing things to a state of balance so that when the time comes to stop fabricating, the mind doesn't tip over in any direction at all. It's right there. So these qualities of consistency, persistence, stick to itiveness training the mind so it can really trust itself, depend on itself, rely on itself, in the midst of all the inconstancy of the world. Those are the qualities that make all the difference in the meditation.